All right, guys, welcome back to relegation battle. The group stage is now ended in Euros, and tomorrow we well, the knockout stages begin. So before we go into that, let's just quickly go through the end of the group stages. Jack, Italy ended three clean sheets, nine points. Uh, it's quite, a, you know, the last game, they put pretty much a second team against Wales, but still got the job done fairly easily. Uh, and if it's Austria in the next round now, how do you see that going? I think they had a very comfortable group, but they made it look very comfortable as well. You know, whereas I know I talk about England, but we had a we had a comfortable group, but made it hard for ourselves. But I thought Italy was superb in the group stage. Like you said, they put our weekend team against Wales, and all those where Wales didn't need to win, they but um, Italy still won and nine points, nine points from nine, three clean sheets, like you said, looking like not uh, lovely. And against Austria. They didn't um, look too bad, but Italy, I think, just going to have too much for them, and it could be two or three, four, four nil, maybe. Yeah, and we mentioned a bit that uh, you know Wales also going through, and they didn't beat Italy. They got Denmark in the next round. Uh, you know, Denmark put a really good display in the final game against Russia, four one. Great goal from Christensen as well in that. How do you see that game going? Because Wales haven't been bad since that opening game. I, yeah, you're right. I mean. Like you said, Wales' first game, and they were so lucky to get a point. Second and third game, I mean, third game didn't really matter, but second game, I thought they were very good. Um, Denmark is a sticky one because, obviously, you can't really look too much into that first performance against Finland just because mm -hmm. they played so soon after that um, traumatic event. Their second game was Bel Belgium. Yeah. And... You know, they went 1 0 up, they lost 2 1, just a bit of quality. So maybe they didn't, I didn't really watch that game, just about how they played. And like I said, they put on a very good performance against um, Russia to get through. And I don't know, maybe, maybe they just started playing at the right time, you know. So, but I, I, that's a tough one to call for me because I think Wales have looked good in that. In, I, Wales did look good in that second game, to be fair. And Ramsey, Bale, Dan James, they, they're looking good. So I think that's a tough one to call. But if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Wales to win it just. Yeah, it's a weird one, Denmark, because in that Belgian game, they did play well, to be fair to them. But like you said, De Bruyne and Hazard came on and they just, you know, two great goals, a bit of quality from the Kaka as well, which took away from Denmark. But then that Russia game, which was almost pure domination from them. And then, you know, that goal difference then took them through to second place as well. Yeah, I think that's going to be a great match to watch. I think that's the first game as well tomorrow, so yeah, should be a good way to a good way to kick things off. And then, so you know, Belgium's other team obviously nine points in the group, only see one goal. That one goal to Denmark. They face Portugal the next round. Portugal, you know, it was a good game with France. You know, a lot of penalties in the game, but it's still an like even game. They look. Uh, if, the Hungary game was a bit of a weird one, like we talked about last week, but Germany was poor from Portugal, especially defensively. But it's still, I feel like it's still a hard one to call after the way they performed against France. I think it is, you're right. I mean, like you said, Belgium, again, had a comfortable group and made it look com quite comfortable in the end. Nine points out of nine. And Portugal, I mean, like we spoke about it, um, I think, in the last show, and like, they weren't great against Hungary. You know, they had those chances, but they were quite wasteful and yeah, they won 3 0. I think it was a bit harsh and hungry, the 3 0 scoreline and how well they defended. But and then that Germany game, they got battered. And then France, I didn't really watch that game, but like you said, a lot of penalties. Maybe they thought, oh, we already got a, we got a win or we need now a draw. So maybe they just played it out, but. Portugal didn't have looked too good over these three group games in general. So that's another tough one to call. You would put your money on Portugal, but Belgium are a good side. You know, they because they already threw their rested players in the last game, so their players are going to be a bit more fresh than Portugal. So you never know how it's going to turn out. Like I said, I'm going to back Portugal because just their, their team is like, I know Bel Belgium quite high ranked, but Portugal had a team I think are very good and I think they'll put on a good display against um, Belgium. Yeah, again, I think it's a close one, like you said, you know, because Renard is obviously fighting for Portugal, but then Lukaku is doing the same for Belgium. 
De Bruyne is just getting you know more and more game time, which is dangerous for the, everyone else. Hazard looked quite good in that final group game as well. If he somehow you know just finds that form from a few seasons ago, then you know Belgium could be the team that we expect them to be over the last few years. I think. I mean, you know, the winner of that game also faced one of Italy Austria, so you know that could also you know it's a, it's, it's a tough draw for Belgium because mm. they finished top of their group, same for Italy, but that is. I guess tournament of football. Then, if we go to Group C, Netherlands also nine points. Probably a weaker group than both Belgium and Italy. I guess you could argue, but you know, got the job done. Depay and Ronaldo have been brilliant for them. And in the next round, they are up against Czech Republic. Do you think that'll be easy enough for them? Yeah, I think Czech Republic caused us a few problems, but I think we looked dodgy in the whole three games anyway. But so I think they'll, I think Holland, yeah, I think they'll comfortably win that. I think Czech Republic will defend quite well, but then once that first goal go in, I think like maybe two or three can go in. Yeah. Like I said, the pie and why now that I play very good. Yeah. You Same know with Dunk Freeze as well at exactly. wing back. Yeah, you know, this we talked about a bit last week, the attacking football that they've been playing, you know, Dumfries and are not pushing on. But, you know, while now Dum, he's I mean, got two goals in that last group game against, uh, he was in North Macedonia. Yeah. He's got to PSG on a free transfer or free transfer, you know, obviously still where he's involved. But, you know, how, you know, is, is, is that a big signing, do you think, for PSG to get someone like that? I think it's a massive sign. I think over the last couple of years when we spoke about it, We've always said PSG, the one one area they need to improve, midfield, you know. So mm-hmm. getting a quality play one now them is, is a very good sign. And however, I know it's the Euros, but I just want to say Liverpool have got an away with it because the media attention on this free transfer hasn't really been talked about enough. I think mm-hmm. if it was Man United, if it was Arsenal, if it was Chelsea, I think if we let a, I'd say an integral part of the team let go, yeah. For free, I think there would have been some big deal made out of it. But Liverpool would just, yes, why now? Them, yes, Liverpool. Yeah, we left on a free, so what? But I think it is a very good deal for PSG. Yeah, I agree. I think it's safe if Pogba is left on a free, whatever mm. next year, and he's performing like this in a major tournament. Then there'll be definite questions to ask of say Klopp or whoever is in charge. Yeah, yeah. So that that's an interesting one. Uh, before we go into actual. Um, so sort of tournament that size going to England's final performance well two performances because we didn't see it mentioned Scotland one last week the Scotland game was a bit worrying in the sense that you know both of the other teams beat them and we couldn't then we did get their winning in Czech Republic in the end you know do you think Southgate was almost helped a bit by you know Mason Mount almost and Miss Mount not being able to play and also Phil Foden being on that yellow card, which almost led him to be forced to play Jack Grealish in that game. Um, yeah, probably because we don't, we all know if he was available, Mount would have played regardless. Hmm. That means one of Grealish or Saka wouldn't play, and like you said, if Foden wasn't on the yellow card, he probably would have played as well. So that would have, like you said, it dealt his hands. So, although as England fans, you know, Saka played, Saka played brilliantly. To be fair, mm. but none of us before the game said, "Yeah, Saka needs a play. Saka needs a play." It was all yeah. on Grealish, and I think if Matt was available and if Foden didn't get a yellow card, I don't think we would have seen Grealish regardless. So, I'm happy that we saw him, but. A bit annoyed that it was only because of circumstances that he played. Yeah, like you mentioned, when before the game, no one's really calling out for Saka. I think part of the reason for that, is, even from Arsenal fans, is because everyone knows the quality of Jadon Sancho and what he brings. And you know, I think people understand Sancho is a step ahead of Saka in that attacking department right now. And you know, there's no doubt about that. So before we go into his England minutes, how happy that he's almost there, United now. I don't want to be negative because I've always I've wanted him for the past two years. I think he's a fantastic talent. I think he's a fantastic player, even though he's so young. 
I do think we need a right winger and I do think he's a perfect perfect player for it. However, it's kind of like gone over our fans' head and they're just like, oh my God, we've got Sancho. Yes, yes, yes. But neglecting the fact that we need a CDM. I think there's talks at the moment progressing in Varane, so which is a good sign, but we never know of our board. But there's no talk of a CDM, which is a priority position. Yeah. And although as I love Sancho, if you're telling me we're paying 80 million on Sancho and we're not getting a CDM, I'd rather not get Sancho, get a CDM and just deal with Diallo Greenwood again for another season. Because that's what we need. But not being too negative, I think Sancho's a fantastic player and I can't wait to see him next year. Yeah, and you know, can you see him getting minutes of England now? Because it's going to be hard to drop Saka after he gets a man of the match. Before I like, put a man of the match, just play. Foden's going to be obviously a big, you know, he's a more favoured choice, I think, for Southgate. Sancho just came on for like, the last seven minutes of the game, you know, didn't have much time to almost show his quality. So, you know, Germany's a big game. He probably knows a lot of their sort of players playing against him in the Bundesliga. So, you know, that will always give him an advantage. But do you think he'll get a, you know, a decent amount of minutes in the game? Nope. Just because, I don't know how true this is, there's talk that his training performances aren't up to scratch, which is why he ain't playing. And with Southgate, or to be honest, we're probably with any manager, you're not going to play seven minutes in three games and then play loads of games in the first knockout round. It just doesn't work, you know? Hmm. So, like, but, like you said, Saka, I think, was played brilliantly. You can't really drop him. I think he won't I think he won't play just because he was only played in that because of Foden and Mount. Yeah. And whether Mount plays in that game, I don't know, because it's just a day after and whether they're gonna be having have they have trained enough. So but I think Foden will come back in. It's just whether Grealish or Saka starts and like like we said, we only think Saka started because of those yellow cards and in and like COVID isolation, whether he starts, I don't know. But I would like to see Joe, Sancho starts, but if he comes to May night, we know he's going to play every single minute, every single game. So rather than just not playing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And obviously, you know, we've got Germany next round now. They've set up in a, almost a three back with, you know, with Kimmich and Gerson's out wide. England have set up with Rice and Phillips all three games now. It's a you can say it's a bit negative, but it does help defensively just getting the ball up the field. That's the problem for them. I think that's fair to say. But yeah, when you've got Muller, Gundogan, and Tony Cruz in there, would you be in a well tactically if you're Southgate, would you be a bit more inclined to play Rice and Phillips again just to almost stop that as much as you can? Yeah, I think you have to. Although although you people say, yeah, but we've got the talent to go dominate a game. These players have played a higher level a lot longer, you know. They're mm. they're seasoned pros, you know. So a lot of our players is our, this is their first major tournament, you know. So we can't just go gun ho and just be like, yeah, we've got we've got we may have better players in different positions, and we just say, you know what, we'll just play Rice alone and play and play Mount and someone else in there. But I think we're for the defensive capability of them and I think you have to play Bryce and Phillips again in this game just to be defensively solid to allow your front four to go and just have a freedom not to worry too much about coming back. Yeah, I think you make a great point there in terms of the quality of our players. You know, like I said, if you say Tony Cruz, how many tournaments has he been to now and, you mm. know, the things he's achieved in his career compared to, say, you know, even a Mason Mount, like, no respect to them. But if you look at our team, I think it's only maybe Harry Kane, Sterling, these guys are like... Their, their quality is almost at their peak yeah. right now. Whereas the rest of them, Rice, Phillips, Mount, Foden, they're still so young. So young. Yeah. You know, they're saying, oh, this is our golden generation. It is, but they'll be at their best in four, like four to eight years, maybe. Yeah. So not right now. So, you know, I think you still have to be a bit cautious right now. Which brings me to our next point. We have kept three clean sheets in our three games. So do you think that, you know, this sort of media tension on focusing on playing Grealish and getting these goals has sort of taken away from how, sort of not well, but you know, how strong you have been defensively. Because on the international stage, it is hard to sort of, you know, be a rock solid and almost give away like zero shots because, you know, they don't play week in, week out at like club level. But three clean sheets is still a pretty good achievement, I'd say. 
you're right, it is. And I think it has been overshadowed by the talk about the Grealish play and the not that much attacking talent and or attacking talent on show. So I think defensively we have been good. However, I have seen a few points that we probably should have conceded in two of the mm. three games. I think Croatia not so much, but Scotland picked made a fantastic save. Yeah. Croatia, Suchek, they had a few chances against us. So although we played good defensively, I do think we're a bit lucky not to concede. Mm. So I don't think we can say we've been excellent defensively, even though even though the clean sheet show we have, I think when you watch the games, you can see that we're still vulnerable to set pieces, high balls, you know. So we've got to be careful, but it's looking in like we have we have played good so far, in yeah. my opinion. So seeing that now, would you say five of the back might be a bit more appropriate against Germany given their sort of full full backs or wing backs if you want to call it from Ghost and the Kim to how dangerous they've been? So would you say, well, you know, Maybe put Carl Walker or even a Maguire Stones Mings at the back. You know, would you say now is almost a time to go for it, or would you stick with the back four? Well, I think personally, especially after watching that Scotland game, I think we should go to a back three just because watching the Scot watching Scotland watching Scotland against us, sorry, we got dominated in those wide areas. You know, we played Sterling and Foden, I think, either side. They were trying to track back, but we just got dominated those areas. You know, I think it was one ball from Robertson went all the way over to that shot from their right wing back who um, Pickford made a good save from. So I think we got dominated in that area. So I wouldn't be opposed. I think we maybe should go to a back three against them, you know. But then the point of that is we go to a back three with three centre backs and he's still going to play Rice and Phillips, yeah. which may seem as too defensive. And then you went, I mean, it can. It cannot be because then you've got that solid base and your wing backs are allowed to push up and then realistically you've got a back five with a front five. But I don't know if when Southgate's playing a back five or back three, whatever you want to say, his wing backs do kind of tuck in, stay back like it's a back five. Or could you really, could really call it a back seven with the two set CDMs? But I think I think this game we should match them. I know we've got quality and we should play our own game, but You've got to be aware of the opposition as well, and like the Scotland, like I said with the Scotland game, I think we got dominated in those wide wide areas with those um, overlaps from the wall, for, um, wing backs and even sometimes the outside centre back. So we do need to be wary, and I would go to a back three slash five year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we'll come back to like I said, uh, sort of uh, England Germany game. So Group E, Sweden topped it, Spain second, and. Uh, Slovenia, uh, Slovakia, sorry, unfortunately did miss out in the finish third. Spain, you know, we talked about last week, they created a lot of chances, but it was a finishing as a problem. And it's the same in the second game against uh, Poland. And, you know, Leonardo scored a great hurry to equalise there. But in the final game, they finally managed to put away their chances in a pretty good 5 0 win. They're playing, uh, let me just quickly up. They're playing against Croatia in the next round. Croatia, good performance in Scotland, to be fair. Modric scored a great goal in that game. Yeah. But, you know, we can't, Spain are, you know, in all three games, they're showing they have dominant possession and they are creating chances. So, you know, how do you think they'll fare now that they've had that big win under the belts? I think that'll be a, probably a bit, a big sigh of relief, just because, like you said, they got two points from their opening two games. Through both of them, they're probably thinking, right, if we don't score here, if we don't if we don't score one of these chances, we're out. So scoring five would have been, would have given them a massive boost, you know. So they're going into this with a lot of confident confidence, I think. So are Croatia and their victory they did against Scotland, but they were poor against Stars and only got a draw against Czech Republic. So I think Spain will come into this more confident and I think Spain will win it. Yeah, I, I definitely see that happening. I think even though Morata not had a bad game, but you know, missed a penalty, yeah, which, you know, it wouldn't help his confidence in general. But I think just knowing that his team has still got the job done and probably backing him as well. And I think the fans are backed him when he was subbed off, probably still gives the whole team a lot of confidence. I think moving on to that final group, you know, before we talk about the big three, how unlucky were Hungary? 
you know, not to go through the minutes away, but then Goretzka mm. got that last, not last minute, but late equalizers. How unlucky were they? Oh no, I felt so sorry for them because they're supposed to be the, they're supposed to be that every boy, every team takes at least three points off. So, mm. you know, they get, they lose, unluckily lose their first game. Maybe in the balance they should have lost, but in the context of the game, unlucky to lose that game. Second game, what a brilliant draw against France. And you went to the final game thinking Germany just beat Portugal. Germany are going to batter Hungary now. But no, Hungary went 1-0 up. Then Germany got a second half equalised. And then minutes later, or a minute later, Hungary score again. And you're thinking, mm. right, just hold on now and you're through. But luckily for Germany, they got an equaliser. That sent them through. And then Hungary were unlucky, out, un- really unlucky to miss out. Yeah, I mean... They put up a great display in all three games, you know. They mm. caused France problems. Germany got quite lucky in third because there's a deflected goal and then the yeah. first goal was even the keeper error as well. But all the three of these big teams are through. Um, uh, France could play Switzerland now. Switzerland finished third in their group. It was a pretty good display against Turkey from them. Shakira getting the job done. But, mm. you know, we saw against Italy, they didn't really turn up at all. They could be outplayed. Do you expect a uh, similar thing against France? I think France will just have too much quality for them. Mm. Like you said, like that Italy game, it's going to be a bit, bit similar. Switzerland are going to come in and try and defend, but with the players France have, I think they're just going to have too much for Switzerland. And yeah, I see this being an easy win for France. Maybe, nah, I wouldn't say easy because we're in a round of 16. You know, Switzerland, even though they're the underdogs, they're going to try and want to prove themselves. So maybe we're mm. not easy, but I do think France will win. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a close one. But we'll talk about the actual round of 16 now and also for the ties. We'll go with England first. So, obviously, we've got Germany, which is in the easiest game. But I think it's fair to say we're on the easiest side of the draw. You know, if we win, if we beat Germany, we play Sweden or Ukraine. And then the other teams are Netherlands, Czech Republic, and Wales, Denmark. Obviously, Holland could cause a bit of problems for us. But in the general scheme of things, it is not the hardest part of the final, is it? No, it's not. And I think that's what I was saying to a few people, you know, people saying, yeah, we should finish second, we get an e- easier draw in the first round. But then we're on the other side, and after that, it's just so much harder. Mm-hmm. So I think, like I said, to win, you're going to have to win the whole tournament. You're going to have to beat them at some point, you know? So you might as well... And this, you know what? If we don't beat Germany, it just shows we weren't ready. Maybe this manager isn't ready for us. You know, maybe the right manager isn't right, but... If we go and beat Germany, then we have a good chance of actually getting to that final. You know, like you said, there's no easy game, so Ukraine and Sweden be hard, but you'd put money on us winning that. Mm. You know, and then Holland have looked good, Netherlands have looked good, but again, I do think we have a lot of quality in our team, and I do think we could beat them. We maybe should beat them. Realistically, it will be a tough challenge, but maybe we should beat them. So. You're looking at maybe hopefully getting to the final if we beat Germany, but that's all ifs and buts. But we have to wait till Tuesday to see how we perform against Germany. Yeah, and how do you think that game will go? Because I don't maybe I'm just being feeling a bit optimistic right now, but I, you know, Germany, in that France game, I don't think they've barely created a good chance for themselves. Portugal, fair enough for them. They, you know, sort of knew where their best chance would come from and they used it well against Portugal from the wing back area. But fair, I think we're stronger than Portugal there in terms of the depth we have in both left back and right back, and whether it's Shaw, Chilwell, Reese James, Walker, anyone. I think we're yeah. good there. So, you know, although we've had sort of this goal, if you want to draw out whatever you call it, two goals in three games, do you think our defence will be sort of enough to stop that German attack? And, you know, whether we get the goal, whether it goes to penalties, do you think we can do it? I think I'm, I'm a bit like you, you know, I know I'm not overly confident, but I think we have a very good chance of winning this. Like you said, we, we're we not as frail as uh, fullbacks as Portugal, so I don't think, I think they will cause us problems. They're a brilliant team. I don't think they'll cause us as many problems, and I think it's really going to that. I think Maguire was excellent in that Czech Republic game. Yeah. So I think him coming back in will give the whole team a boost. And, you know, we have had a drought, you know, two two goals in three games. Both from Sterling, but that gives me a bit, you know, 
Harry Kane, you know, he hasn't been great, but he rarely ever goes four or five games without a goal, you know? Mm. He's he's relishing goal, he's expecting a goal. On on the odds, he's he's got a goal next game, realistically. So although we haven't played great, we haven't scored a lot, you never know. This could be the game where we, we could turn it all around and you know, we get a couple counters, Kane scores, Sterling scores some more, Mount gets a new that photo or something like that, or it could go the opposite way. We just get d- demolished, you know. We get we can't get our horse every time we pass. It's just too slow. We can't get up the pitch, and we just get we just get bombarded with shots and goals, and they're going to score. But hopefully, I think our players will turn up, and I do think we can win. Yeah, like, like I said, that you know that Germany backline, even though they play well in attacking sport, they still can see two goals. Um, Homos is not the Homos no. like he was how like when they won the World Cup. Rudiger, yeah, he's done all right recently, but I still don't back him as a. He's prone uh, to a mistake. Yeah, he's prone to a mistake. Uh, I think Ginter, you know, uh, not the fastest. But the, yeah, exactly. The whole backline isn't quick, so we saw mm. in the last game how you know Luke Shaw can easily play a point behind Sterling or any something like that. You know, if Saka attacks one of them or Kane, yeah. Like I said, Kane is due a goal. And yeah. Against his back line, you would probably expect him to get one. So, yeah. And even Neuer hasn't done anything special with this tournament, yeah, I'd he's say. He's been a bit dodgy as well. Yeah. So, you know, I do back our chances against them. And like I said, you know, if we beat someone like Germany at Wembley in front of 40,000 people, that could only boost these players so much mm. in terms of confidence as well. So, it could be interesting. But then, because yeah, the other I'm side sure. of things, so Belgium, Portugal, the winner of that face, Italy, Austria. Then I feel like there's a potential upset in France against Spain because France have not been convincing for me defensively. Um, they have a problem at left back next. I, did, I think Dini is going to be fit. You know, Lucas Hernandez is a good defender, in my opinion. I think he can be exposed a bit because I think he's better at centre back than left back. Spain, I don't think they'll change anything for tactically for France. I think they're going to stay the same and go for that possession football. And I think France is going to sit off a bit. Varane can go to sleep, not easily, but he can go to sleep. And Kimpembe is very, very rash in, this, in some of his decision making. I think if you know Spain plays the ball around like they have been, some people say it's boring, but they keep possession away from the opponent and they create chances. So you know, if Pedri, Jordi Alba, you know, Koke has been brilliant, I think. Even though there's been Marcus Laurentiu Aspi, that right back, you know, they, they've been putting boys in the books and um, they haven't really caught on the counter either. The one goal they conceded, I think, was that Lewandowski goal and that was just a great header from a great striker. So, you know, I personally think Spain could win that game against France if they both win their round of 16 games. What about you? Um, I mean, I totally, I think they can win that game. I just think saying that um, France haven't looked good defensively, and you're right, they don't think they have. They looked a bit shaky. Even though I think they're, we all say they're favourites for the tournament, they had a tough group still. Yeah. You know, and yeah, they should have beat Hungary, but in the hindsight, Hungary did well. But even though they're favourites, Portugal are a very good team and Germany are a very good team. You expect them maybe you, you expect them to win, but you can't just expect them to be, just have a 100% possession, you know, the other teams mm. are that good that they're going to have periods that France are going to have to sit off. They're going to have to accept that they aren't going to have possession. And I think Germany and Portugal, they're quality players, so they're going to cause problems. So they have looked dodgy, but I don't think they've looked dodgy from themselves. I just think they look dodgy from having good players playing against them. Yeah. And I'm not saying Spain don't have good players, but do they have as good as players as Portugal, as good players as Germany? I don't know. Maybe they do. But so going, you said they Spain could cause them problems with, like you said, they're gonna. I don't think they'll change either. You know, they're gonna have. They probably have more possession. France will sit back and try and get them counter with the pace of Mbappe, Griezmann, and Pogba playing the balls in behind. So, and Spain don't have a really a quick defense either. So. I think that would be an interesting matchup, providing they both win their first knockout game. Yeah, and 
you know, that Mbappe Benzema link up has been brilliant. It's obviously Giroud just sit on the bench, you know, he's close to breaking that record. So, uh, how important do you think that link up is between those two if you know they carry on playing up front? Like you said, it's been very good. I think they've, they've linked up well. I think after we all thought they were going to be a bit not passed to each other because of obviously what happened prior to the um, like the warm up, but they've looked good together. I think the I think the whole attack has actually put, looked quite good. You know, they scored quite a few good goals against Germany, but offside. So I think they can cause every team problem, problems. Yeah, you know, the attacks are good, but I think in Griezmann as well, you know, even though he hasn't been involved in the tracking contributions as he was in Euro 2016, where he's sort of getting most of the goals, I think the shift he's putting in midfield has been very important to them, you know, helping Pogba, or like almost with the tracking back and also with the build up. Is it? Sort of different to what we see usually from him out of France and at Barca. So, I think you know he's been doing quite well. I think it's gone unnoticed as well. Mm. Doing it under the radar. I don't think anyone plays in Pogba and Mbappe, Benzema. Rightly, rightly so. But I think, like you said, Griezmann's gone under the radar and been very good as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I think you know Ronaldo's not comfortably, but you know five goals in the group stages mm. is very good from him. But yeah, the last thing I want to mention before we end off is I think came out maybe an hour ago, maybe under an hour ago. But um, Henry Winter, journalist, said Southgate's going to be offered a contract extension until Euro 2024. FA are a big fan of him. They say he's doing a great job. But after Euros are done, it's when they like start to properly do the, have competition with them about the new contract. Southgate, you know, I think it's fair to say he gets a lot of criticism from fans but he's getting results. So, you know, how do you feel about that? I think it's a, diff- I just think it's a difficult one with international football just because you don't play 38 games a season. You know, you play a couple of friendlies here, a couple of friendlies there, and you want to win every game, but you don't get a lot of time to work with these players, you know. Mm. In the warm-up, none of the... Champions League finalists played in the two warm-up games. They had a couple of weeks to prepare for the first game against Croatia. So, I think international football is not really about looking pretty. Mm. It's just about getting results and that's what he's doing. Whether he's using our squad to the fullest capability, you probably say no with the players we have, but I think you've got to remember it's not a video game. You can't just have all the best players on the pitch at once. Yeah. You know, you've got to have structure to the team. You've got to have balance. And yeah, we want to dominate games. We want to have all the possession, but I don't think we're there yet as a team. Mm. You know, I don't think even if we had a different manager, I still don't think we could with the players we had. I just like like we said earlier in the show, they're still first major tournaments, 22, 23. I still they think got a lot to learn at club level and international level. So I don't want to say he should or shouldn't get the um, contract extension, but we'll have to wait and see how the Euros go. Yeah, and like, unless we get like smacked like 5 0 by Germany, I don't think I'd be too upset in seeing him get a new contract. You know, like I said, you can't, I don't think anyone expected us to get to the semis in the last World Cup, even though we had an easier run than the other teams who got there. We still got there. Finished top of our group in qualifying. Again, not the easiest teams, but he's still got to get the job done. And he is, even though he's not everyone's not getting the minutes they might want from in terms of from fans' perspective, he is getting a lot of youngsters into the team and getting them minutes in general and you know, internet like tournament minutes as well now. So mm. you can't yeah. Like, I know we talk about in the amount of names we mentioned. Yeah, Jaden Sancho is an unbelievable footballer and you know, I would play in my starting personally. You can't be too upset when other good players still start ahead because at the end of the day, he is a manager. So, you know, I think it's a, a lot of criticism is a bit unfair because, you know, everyone wants to see that fantastic sort of liquid football up top. But yeah. at the end of the day, he's getting, he's getting the things we need. And if, if we get to another semis playing the way we do, I don't think anyone will be too upset. So mm. it's going to be an interesting one. I think Tuesday is going to be a big, big game. But yeah. I think we'll wait and see. I think, I think for now we're fine, but Tuesday morning, 
is going to be very Windows, yeah. dead. Now it's going to kick in. It's, it's, only, it's a five o'clock kickoff. It's going to feel weird because once the game's done, got a lot of time before going to bed. So yeah. if we lose, it's going to be very bad. But hopefully we do it. But yeah. Um, thank you, Jack, for joining me. That's all from us this no week. Worries. Have a nice. Before I think it's time to talk. I think it's time.